Hi and welcome to a new video. As I announced it multiple times, we will now talk about my Davao Aqua Exhalare system, which I showed during last year's Gamescom. The system is quite unique, as you've probably seen it before. It's using a two-phase submerged cooling system, so all the hardware you can see is basically submerged in a fluid, and the fluid is called 3M Novak 7100. And it's quite different from everything, everything that you have seen before, for example, oil cool system it's completely different because an oil cool system always has the issue that you basically you have the oil and the hardware is heating up the oil and then somehow you have to get rid of the heat inside the oil so for example you would have to place a radiator or something inside the oil just to cool the oil itself in this case we don't have this problem because we want the fluid to evaporate that's why we are using 3m Novak 7100 because the boiling point is fairly low. We have a boiling point of 61 degrees Celsius, which is still suitable for all the hardware inside. Of course, the fluid is not electrically conductive. It's also not reactive, so we don't have any issues with any components inside, which is obvious, otherwise this wouldn't work. Otherwise you would have to seal off everything, which usually doesn't work that well. So that's why we're using the 3M Novak 7100. I'm now working on the Aqua Exalare 2.0, that's the successor of this um, system. And in this system, I'm actually using a different fluid because 61 degrees Celsius as boiling point is still okay, but it doesn't really leave that much headroom for overclocking. So in this video, we will just talk about the experiences I had about building this two-phase liquid cooling system. Also, all the issues I experienced, all the issues I had to solve for the Aqua Exalare 2.0. And I also want you to check out everything. I want you to follow it. Uh, maybe note down if you have any questions, put those questions into the comments because in the next follow-up video I will check all your comments, answer all your comments so we have the same uh, knowledge base and then we can move on to the Aqua Exalare 2.0 build lock. So as I said before, it's quite different from any kind of oil cooling system, which you can also call a submerged system, but this is a two-phase submerged system. So the main difference is that we're using a two-phase cooling system. So basically that means every component that's getting hot, for example, if it's the CPU, if it's the GPU, maybe even some connectors that are getting hot, we can kind of see that sometimes that some connectors actually also have some bubbles coming up. So what we want is that we want it to evaporate and then we have the gas that's going up here and inside the tank on top, we have a radiator and the radiator which is sitting on top is cooled by another radiator which is sitting in front. So we have a simple water cooling loop which basically just consists of the two radiators and the uh, pump and reservoir combination from EK which is sitting on the bottom here. Also this is con uh, controlled by an Aquero. And this water cooling loop is basically needed for condensation. So all the gas that's inside the box here will basically condensate on the radiator and then drop back down. And that's how we close the cooling loop. And the reason why we want to have this type of cooling solution, the two-phase cooling, is that it's extremely efficient because you need quite a lot of energy for the phase change from liquid to gas. And that's why it's extremely efficient. So in this system, we can actually cool the whole setup, which is a Skylake X, 8-core CPU and a GTX 1080. We can cool the whole system just by having the 240 radiator in front. Basically, I even tested it. We can even cool it completely with, 120, with one 120 millimeter radiator, which is actually quite impressive. If you think about the temperatures you would have, um, cooling a Skylake X CPU and a GTX 1080 with one 120 uh, millimeter radiator just with water cooling you would have very very bad water cooling temperatures. So the benefit is as I said before the phase change and that's why we can use only a very small surface area. The reason why I use the 240 millimeter radiator in front is basically just to have a little bit more headroom because sometimes if the room temperature would be too high, if we would have like 35 degrees Celsius, let's uh, say for example during an exhibition or during summer, um, it wouldn't work that well to have the condensation. So that's why I cho chose to use a 240 millimeter in the front. A lot of people always ask me about the hardware configuration, which you can see inside. Mainly they ask me about why is there no PCH cooler on the PCH. It's pretty simple. The TDP is quite low, so we have 6 to 8 watt TDP roughly of X299 PCH. And this amount of heat can easily be just dissipated through the PCB of the mainboard, so we don't really need a cooler. And I wanted to avoid any kind of coolers, mainly because most of the nowadays motherboard coolers, they also have a lot of plastics on there, maybe, I don't know, rubber, stickers, whatever. 
The issue is that this fluid, it, it doesn't really have any problems with hardware, with any types of metals or anything, but it can have problems with um, specific type of plastics, specific types of elastomers. So I wanted to remove all unnecessary plastic from the system. One more thing a lot of people ask me is why is there this cooling block on the GPU? It's actually a GPU only water block from EK, just removed the housing and everything, and then screwed it onto the GPU. And then they ask me, why did you not do it on the CPU itself? The reason is pretty simple because the IHS of the Intel X299 CPU is big enough to dissipate all the heat. Actually, it's surface treated in a special way to increase the surface area. We will go over that in a special video for Aqua Exhalare 2.0. But one thing we cannot do is just have the bare silicon because the bare silicon just doesn't have enough surface area. We would have very bad temperatures on that. I tested that before building the system. That's why I decided to use the GPU only water block from EK on the GPU itself. The biggest issue of those systems is actually sealing it off. Sealing it off is a huge challenge. So we have this acrylic tank. I built the acrylic tank myself. We laser cut it in here and then I have to glue the acrylic tank together. And just choosing the glue is already a big challenge because you have to find a glue that doesn't get dissolved by the liquid. Uh, finally, I found a glue that works very, very well. But still we have the problem that all the cables that go inside the tank also have to go out obviously. So that starts from the power cables from the PSUs and we have all the data connections. We, we need USB cables, Ethernet, we need uh, HDMI, all this kind of stuff. And it's a big challenge sealing off cables because actually you cannot seal them off. Even if you decide that you put the cable through a small hole in the acrylic then seal off the cable to the acrylic, you still have the issue if pressure is building up inside the system, the pressure will essentially push the liquid through the cable inside. So you would have to seal off the cable perfectly, you would have to seal off the connector and most of the connectors for the PC usage, they are not meant to do that. So you would need very special connectors and uh, yeah, it's not really an option to make special connectors for this. So I had to find an option how I can still seal it off while not sealing off the cables. I found the solution to do that. Again, this will be in a special video because it's just too much uh, for one video, but I can already tell you that I found a solution for this because this was probably the biggest problem of the Aqua Exalare as it's standing here. It's mainly that it's not 100% sealed off. On top here you can see an emergency overpressure valve which is set to one bar. It's mainly just to protect the tank. Usually you would ha not have a pressure inside there which is that high because if the pressure is building up then the condensation is also increasing and then you don't have those issues. If you would want to remove the fluid it's possible just by connecting a tube here and then just filling it back into the tank. But one issue I found are actually those connectors. It doesn't really matter. Those are 90 degree rotary fittings. It doesn't matter if you use some from EK Waterblocks, if you use them from Excess PC or Bits Power. I tested all of them. The biggest problem on those are the O-rings because basically the fluid is kind of dissolving the O-rings. So yeah, you can use them and then after two or three weeks the system starts to leak. I have o-rings actually that I can use to replace the o-rings on water cooling fittings to make them seal off which works perfectly fine then but the problem is the o-ring that's actually sitting inside here cannot be changed unless you want to destroy the fitting so yeah that was also one big challenge so I either had the option of making my own fittings or just avoiding them I decided on avoiding them for the second Aqua Exalare so I'm not using any 90 degree rotary fittings again for the new Aqua Exalare build. So much for now about my two-phase submerged liquid cooling system. If you have any questions, as I said before, please put them down in the comments. I will go over all your comments and answer them in the next video. See you soon.